In this video from IT Free Training, I will look at how to create, use, and convert virtual hard disks on Windows Server 2012 R2. By the end of this video, you will have an understanding of how to create and use and convert virtual hard disks in Windows Server. However, the same principles also apply to Windows clients, such as Windows 8. I will now change to my server running Windows Server 2012 R2 to perform the demonstration. First, I will look at creating a virtual disk. To do this, I will right click on the start menu and select the option Disk Management. Once Disk Management has opened, I will next select the action menu and select the option Create VHD. It is now just a matter of entering in some details about the virtual drive that I want to create. In this case, I will enter in a file name, saving the virtual hard disk to the root of the C drive. Next, I will enter in 2 for the size and select the option for 2 terabytes. Under this, you have the options for the virtual hard disk format. The VHD format is the old format that allows virtual disks up to 2 terabytes. The second option is the VHDX format, which allows for creating larger virtual hard disks and has transaction logging to help protect against power failures as well as some other performance features. VHDX is only available on Windows Server 2012 R2 or Windows 8.1. However, as we will see later in this video, it is a fairly simple process to convert a virtual drive from one format to another. By default, the virtual drive will be created using the fixed option. This will pre-allocate the drive space, so in this case, would create a 2 terabyte virtual disk file. In this case, I will select the second option, dynamically expanding. This option will expand the size of the virtual disk as data is added to it. You will notice that when I create the virtual drive, I will get an error message saying the parameter is incorrect. This error message does not give you any indication of what the problem is, but I do, however, know what caused it. I will now once again select the option Create VHD under the Action menu. Once again, I will enter in the file name, but this time I will enter in the size of 1.9 terabytes. The trick here is that the virtual hard disk is limited to 2 terabytes. This includes data and structures like configuration required for the virtual hard disk. For this reason, you will not be able to create virtual hard disks using the VHD format of 2 terabytes. Only up to 2040 gigabytes, if you want to be precise. I will once again select the option for dynamically expanding and press OK to create the virtual hard disk. You will notice that the new virtual hard disk has been attached and appears as disk 1 and will be blue in disk management. The operating system will see the virtual hard disk as it would a normal hard disk or solid state drive. Just like a brand new physical drive, I first need to right click it and select the option Initialize Disk. When prompted, I will leave the default option of MBR selected and press OK to initialize the disk. Now that the disk has been initialized, I can right click it and select the option New Simple Volume to create a volume on the drive just like I would do with a physical disk. Once the wizard appears, I will next my way to the end, accepting all the defaults and complete the wizard. As you can see, besides the hard disk being stored in a file, the operating system appears as a D drive and can be used just like you would the C drive. Later in the video, I will look at how to use the Hyper-V management tool with virtual disks, including how to convert the virtual hard disk to different formats. Before I do this, I will first look at how to do this using PowerShell. To open PowerShell, I will select the icon for PowerShell in the Quick Launch. In PowerShell, I will enter in the command convert VHD. You will notice that when I run the command, I will get an error message saying the command could not be found. In order to run this command, I first need to install the Hyper-V role. To install Hyper-V, I will open Server Manager from Quick Launch. And once open, on the welcome screen, select the option Add Roles and Features. In this case, I will be installing the role on this server, 
so I can accept the default option on the first few screens. On the Role Selection screen, I need to select the role Hyper-V. Once selected, I will be prompted to add additional features. One of these features is the Hyper-V module for Windows PowerShell. You may be asking yourself, could you install these features by themselves and just run the required commands in Windows PowerShell? The answer is no. Unfortunately, the PowerShell commands will not work unless the complete Hyper-V role is installed. Hyper-V does require a physical computer that supports virtualization, which means you cannot run it inside a virtual machine. This makes it difficult for some administrators who may not have a Hyper-V server set up. It should be remembered that Windows 8 supports Hyper-V, so the administrator could install Hyper-V on their workstation or use Windows 8.1 if they are required to use VHDX files. Once I press the Add Features button, I can press Next to move on to the next screen of the wizard. On the next screen, I can select additional features to add. In this case, I do not need to add any additional features other than the ones that were already selected, so I will press Next and move on. The next part is the configuration of the Hyper-V role. In this case, I will accept all the default options as, at this stage, I only want to access the virtual disk options. If you want to learn more about Hyper-V, we have another course coming out on Hyper-V. Now that all the configuration has been made, I can press the Install button to start the install of the Hyper-V role. The install only took around a minute or so to complete on this computer, but, so we do not have to wait, I will pause the video and I will be right back. Now that the role has been installed, I next need to restart the server so the changes can take effect. Even though at this stage I only want to access the commands in PowerShell, they will not be available in PowerShell until a restart has been performed. For the administrator that only wants to do some maintenance on a virtual disk file and does not use Hyper-V, this unfortunately does add a lot of steps to the process. Hopefully, Microsoft will remove the requirement to have Hyper-V installed in order to use PowerShell commands, making the process easier. Once the server has restarted and I'm logged back in, I will right-click on the Start menu and select the option Disk Management. You will notice that the virtual disk that I created earlier is no longer present in Disk Management. Unfortunately, virtual disks will be unmounted during a reboot and not remounted when the computer starts up. To get around this, you would need to create a startup script that will mount the virtual disk during startup. I will now close Disk Management and open PowerShell. Like before, I will run the command Convert VHD. The first parameter that I will enter in is dash path, followed by the file name of the virtual hard disk that I created earlier, which was in a VHD format. Following this, I will enter in the second parameter of dash destination path, followed by the file name that I want to use to write the virtual disk to. Notice that in this case I have used the same file name but have changed the extension to VHDX. So essentially this command is reading the original virtual disk in VHD format and writing it out in VHDX format. Once I run the command it does not take too long to complete. This is because the original virtual disk was dynamic and does not have any data in it. The next command I will run is new VHD with the dash path parameter followed by the file name. The file name is the name of the virtual disk that I want to create. In this case, I will create a different scene virtual disk. This is a virtual disk that is combined with another virtual disk to form a parent-child relationship. Changes for the parent are saved in the child virtual disk. The next parameter that I will enter in is dash parent path followed by the file name. This is the file name of the virtual hard disk that will be used as the master of the parent virtual disk. The last parameter that I will enter in is dash differencing. This indicates that the type of virtual disk that I want to create is a differencing virtual disk. I could also use the parameters fixed or dynamic if I wanted to create virtual disks of these types. Once I run the command, it does not take too long to complete. The commandlets in PowerShell 
offer a lot of control for virtual disks and if you plan to use them it is worth your time to have a look at the other parameters that are available. A lot of the functionality is available in the Hyper-V Manager so I will next have a look at this to see what can be achieved with virtual disks using this tool. To open Hyper-V Manager I will first open Server Manager from the Quick Launch menu. Next I will select Hyper-V Manager. Once Hyper-V Manager has opened I will next select the option Edit Disk on the right which will start the wizard. Once I am past the welcome screen of the wizard on the next screen I need to enter in the location of the virtual disk that I want to make changes to. In this case I will enter in the Browse button and select the child virtual disk that I created earlier using PowerShell. This is a differencing disk that requires its parent disk in order to operate. So let's have a look at how I can convert this to a standard virtual disk that does not require another virtual disk in order to operate. Once I press Next I will be given four options that I can perform on the virtual disk. The first option, Compact, will reduce the size of the virtual disk. It does this by removing data from the virtual disk that is no longer required. For example, data that has been erased. The next option, Convert, allows the administrator to convert a virtual disk from one format to another. For example, you could convert a VHD file to a VHDX file or VHDX file to a VHD file. The process is quite simple and for this reason I would personally use VHDX where possible to take advantage of the new features of VHDX and then convert them to VHD when required. Since the process is so simple it does not require the administrator to make decisions based on compatibility issues that may arise later on. The next option, Expand, allows the administrator to increase the size of an existing virtual disk. A useful feature if the virtual disk was originally created too small. The last option, Merge, allows a differencing virtual disk to be merged together to create a single new virtual disk that does not require the parent virtual disk. In this case, this is the option that I will select and then I will move on to the next screen of the wizard. The next screen of the wizard will ask where you want to merge the changes to. The default option will merge the changes to the parent virtual disk. If this option is selected, then any changes on the child disk will be moved to the parent disk. This is basically copying the changes from the child disk to the parent disk and then erasing the child disk giving you a fresh start. In this case I will create a new virtual disk eliminating the need for the parent-child relationship. To do this I will select the second option to a new virtual disk and then enter in the file name of the virtual disk that I want to use. Notice that I also need to enter in the extension of VHDX. The two options below this allow the type of virtual disk to be selected. By default the option Dynamic Virtual Hard Disk will be selected. This will create a dynamic virtual hard disk that will increase in size as data is added to it. The second option, Fixed Virtual Hard Disk, will create a fixed size virtual hard disk. This will give better performance, however will take longer to create and takes up drive space immediately, whereas Dynamic uses drive space only as required. In this case I will leave it on the default option of dynamic virtual hard disk and move on to the next screen of the wizard. The next screen provides a summary of the options. Once I press finish, a virtual hard disk will be created that no longer requires the master virtual hard disk. If I select the new option, there is an option for hard disk. This will launch a wizard which allows you to create a new virtual disk. The options are much the same as the options that are available in disk management when creating a new virtual disk. The only real difference is that it gives you the option to create a differencing disk, which disk management does not allow you to do. To show you how virtual disks are used with Hyper-V, I will create a new virtual machine using the top virtual machine option. In the Hyper-V course I will go into more detail about virtual machines. In this case, I only want to look at virtual hard disk options so I will press finish and complete the wizard. Once the virtual machine has been created, 
I can right-click it and select the option Settings to bring up the settings for the virtual machine. Once open, the next step is to select the hard drive option on the left. You will notice the option Virtual Hard Disk and the file name of the current virtual hard disk that is being used with this virtual machine. To change it, it is just a matter of pressing the Browse button. Notice that if I browse to the C drive, there are the four virtual hard disks that I created earlier. If I want to use any of these virtual hard disks, it is just a matter of selecting one of them. In this case, I will select the virtual hard disk data drive and press Open. Now this virtual machine is using that virtual hard disk. It is that simple. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video from IT Free Training and found it useful. For more free videos from us, from this course and others, please see our website or YouTube channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.